Hello and welcome to this week's episode of my news wrap, news from the SAP, the Microsoft world and the world in between. So this week will be a shorter episode. There are not that many news, especially from the um, SAP area. So I don't know if they are already uh, keeping things back because of Sapphire. I, I will not hope so. Um, uh, nevertheless, there are some, some quite interesting news from the area of Microsoft, so I think that that will compensate a bit. Good, let's start. Um, news from the from the SIP side of the house. There is one blog post that came across my path, um, which I think is quite important for users of the SAP business technology platform that um, have onboarded onto business technology platform quite some time ago, because it's an, an upgrade from the so-called feature set A to the feature set B. Now, um, the, the one of the main focuses of the, the feature set is a better enablement of the management of your business technology platform, like the introduction of um, directories, like adding um, custom properties and having additional um, options when you do interaction with the SAP Cloud Platform on an, on an API-based level. So for the management, and um, there is now a an, an plan in order to upgrade um, all that stuff, and you can apply for that upgrade. So the upgrade will be rolled out in in several phases, and the SAP wants to make sure that it's a smooth experience. Um, so. Please check out the blog post that I referenced if you're interested in that area and if you want to, to, to have the upgrade now, you can open an, an incident and hopefully you then are one of the lucky ones that can switch over to this new feature set. With that, the second and last news from the SAP area for today and that's um, around the Cloud Application Programming Model. Um, basically, the new release, the update in March came out um, with a lot of, of changes and new samples and um, new tooling. So if you're working with uh, the Cloud Application Programming Model, check out the release notes with the um, changes that is available on the um, CAP homepage. With that, I switch to the um, Part of news from the, the Microsoft area, part from the serverless part, so the, the Azure Functions part. There is one uh, really cool blog post um, about um, securing GitHub webhooks in order to trigger Azure Functions, to be specific, uh, Azure Functions that are using PowerShell by um, uh, Barbara Forbes, who is doing a lot with um, functions and um, PowerShell. And this is really, a, a, I would say, a real life example in order to secure that stuff in a really production grade manner. So if you're working with that, if you are dealing with, um, I think, more and more ops tasks that play or come into um, Azure Functions with PowerShell, then this is definitely worth reading. So that's really something for for ops and, and DevOps, I would say, um, very important um, blog post worth to read. Then there is another blog post for those who like to work with Python. Um, and this blog post kind of highlights how to use a, a framework for API exposure called Fast API um, with Azure Functions. Um, and this is, um, well, focusing especially for um, the, the Python users out there. Um, and it's it's one way or one option how to expose really um, API endpoints. Of course, there are, there are more than that one option, but if you're dealing with that framework um, and you are in the Python area, well, I think definitely worth a read. Then uh, this week, there was quite some traffic around um, Azure Static Web Apps. So first of all, the um, Azure Static Web Apps CLI that I announced um, two weeks before um, is now 
there and, and documented. And this one is really cool <clears throat> because it really allows you to um, start up your um, static web app with the functions in the back end, with authentication, um, doing all the heavy lifting behind the scenes. So that's that's really cool feature. And um, I think Azure Static Web Apps or Azure Static Web Apps yeah, with, with Azure Functions is really something that um, you should take a look at. Um, although up to now, Azure Static Web Apps are still in preview. Um, fitting to that topic, there was also yesterday, so Thursday evening, an episode of Azure Fun Bytes all around Azure Static Web Apps with the um, responsible program manager, Anthony Chu. And uh, the, the topics were general introduction to Azure Static Web Apps, a lot of demos, um, how to move your, your single page app to um, Azure Static Web Apps, how to add APIs, how to add authentication, um, how to deal with custom domains, and how to look um, at an app that, that uses other Azure services and how you can integrate that. And well, for those of you who know Anthony Chu, um, I I did not yet see the, the session, but it's it will be definitely worth it. So um, because he is one of the, the great guys in the Azure Functions and in the Azure Static Web Apps team and always keen on giving you uh, real life examples. Now with that, um, let's switch to the well, more, more generic news from the uh, Microsoft world. Uh, currently, uh, Java is getting quite some love from uh, Microsoft. And uh, this week, there was the announcement of a preview of the Microsoft build of OpenJDK. Um, that is quite important because this way you get a no-cost long-term support for OpenJDK which is not part of OpenJDK itself. So OpenJDK is just the, the open um, part of, of the JDK. Um, it's, it's free for everyone, but there is no support in OpenJDK. So there are other um, distributions um, that <clears throat> and take OpenJDK and, and uh, take care of the, of the maintenance and uh, the support. And now um, Microsoft is joining the club with the Microsoft build of OpenJDK. So for those who use Java in the serverless world or in the non-serverless world, that's something that you should look at. Then um, another, from my perspective, really important article um, when it comes to the usage of Power Apps, which for me is kind of quite important in general when you use low code or no code tools. So currently mm, those tools are quite well heavily pushed for a good reason by Microsoft, but also um, um, SAP is kind of jumping onto the train and tries to, to push that stuff um, because it's quite easy to create solutions because uh, the, the so-called citizen developers are enabled. But um, that's only from my perspective one half of the story because even if it's not a well, core part of your development department of your IT department that implements or, or develops um, those kind of solutions based on the power platform or whatsoever it kind of has to fit into the IT organization it kind of has to fit into the, the overall governance and this blog post highlights that for um, Microsoft Power Apps, uh, especially for a publicly facing um, form like Power Apps with respect to security, with respect to compliance, with respect to privacy, um, and gives you some guidance and some best practices. Because this is something that, that is often overlooked when it comes to low code solutions, that you have all those topics still on your list and you have to fulfill them. And from my perspective, Microsoft is really doing a great job in helping you to make those low code tools fit into your overall IT organization and really um, 
makes you able to deal with all the, the kind of stuff that, that comes around, like, for example, compliance. So that's really, um, I think, important. And um, if you are dealing with, with a low code, even not on Power Platform, I think this is definitely worth a read. Now, um, with that, I switch to the area in between SAP and Microsoft. Um, first, the um, yeah, well-known SAP on Azure podcast that is um, published also every every Friday or Sunday depends a bit. Um, there was again another super cool um, session last Friday or last last Friday, I think. Um, on blue-green deployment, where Martin Pankratz, which is, if you are a regular listener, also well-known, um, about how to do um, uh, blue-green deployment on the SAP Business Technology Platform, um, making use of um, Cloud Foundry CLI plugins in order to make a blue-green deployment um, with a UI5 app. And that that's really what was re really a great session from my perspective. I really like that. Of course, I'm I'm a big fan of of Martin, so. And I think it's it's uh, really, well. I think he's really one of the the best um, persons out there at the moment um, when it comes to real life scenarios when combining SAP and Microsoft because it's not just a showcase. It's really production grade, he really addresses the problems. And he really shows here how to do that in a conjunction with uh, UA5, with Business Technology Platform, with the Cloud Foundry CLI, and with Azure DevOps. So um, really worth the time. Then um, let's go to another topic that I had already. Um, and it's about... Um, integration of SAP Business by Design into Microsoft Teams. That was, the, the beta was announced earlier this year, and there is now um, a five minute video that gives you a better impression how this integration looks like, how this integration feels like, and it's really a deep integration. So it's not just what we saw from Rise with SAP with respect to the, um, to the sales cloud, it's really a much, much deeper, much, much tighter integration of by design with teams that you can, can see here. So that's really cool and really shows where, where the story should go. Um, then um, another topic that is of interest for you if you are dealing with logic apps. Um, as you all know, there are um, a lot of, of um, connectors in there and there is course an SAP connector in there and this SAP connector gets continuously um, enhanced and gets new features and one feature that now came out is the support for RFC transactions. So this is now currently rolling out so you, you might or may not have it right now um, but you should see it soon within your um, SAP connector and you can then use it within your Logic app so that's quite um, cool. Now with that, I would like to switch to the last topic for today, and that's um, events. There is one event that comes up um, in in the end of April, uh, the 20th and the 21st of April. It's the Azure Cosmos DB conference, so it's the first conference on Cosmos DB, which by itself is already cool, but um, there are a lot of sessions on um, combining Cosmos DB and Azure Functions. For example, Cosmos DB and Azure Functions, so as database processing, um, we um, have the, the integration of Azure Cosmos DB in your cloud solution. And there's also another one um, about integrating Cosmos DB with Azure Functions. So uh, that's a really cool topic because I think Azure Functions and Cosmos DB, especially when you think about the serverless Cosmos DB, for example, are a perfect match in um, the serverless world. So I think, well, another remote conference as it is usual at the moment, but with a lot of cool topics, especially um, for Cosmos DB and Functions users. Yeah, with that, um, I'm already at the end of today's session. As announced, it's a shorter one. I hope SAP has some more news next week. Um, 
But with that, I hope I had some news for you, some interesting topics. And I wish you a nice Friday, a nice weekend. And yeah, see you next week in the next episode of My News Wrap. Till then, bye.